Hi guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I am from Aussie Mail and this is our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? Thanks for popping in and spending some time with me today. It is really good to see you here. So today I've got a redo of an old video that we did back originally using Facebook Live. So it was um, done on March the 18th, 2017. So we've had a request or two for this one to be redone. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. We'll be doing a Celtic strap, which is a Celtic Visions um, variation. All right, let's get into it, guys. Alrighty guys, I've made up some sample pieces for you of the Celtic strap weave. Coming up here on the side of your screen will be the sizes I use to make these pieces up with. They will also be listed in the description section that you can find down below the video. But just to run through them quickly with you. Alright, so this one here, uh, they all use two different gauge sizes. So the first one is the bright aluminium, the large rings. They're 14 gauge EWG 1.6 millimeter diameter wire with a ring ID of eight millimeters. The colored rings are 16 gauge EWG 1.2 millimeter diameter wire with a ring ID of 3 sixteenths of an inch or 4.76 millimeters. The next size, the large rings are 16 gauge AWG 1.2 millimeter wire with a six millimeter ID ring. And the colored rings are 18 gauge AWG 1 millimeter diameter wire with a ring ID of 5 32nds of an inch or 3.97 millimeters. And the smaller one, the large rings are 18 gauge AWG 1 millimeter wire with a ring ID of five millimeters and the colored rings are 20 gauge AWG 0.8 millimeter diameter wire with a ring ID of 1 8th of an inch or 3.18 millimeters. Okay so to start this weave up we need to make a short chain that is one large, one small, one large, one small, one large ring. Okay so you go ahead and make up that chain now. however it is that you like to make chains up. One small and one large. Okay, so there you go, that's our starting chain. Now I'm just going to put a twist tie on one end just to give me something to hold on to and hopefully keep my thumbs off the weave as much as I can, but it's not 100% necessary for you to do that. All right, so once you've got your starting chain like that, we're now going to add um, four colored rings. So we're going to add one on each end of our large rings and two on the middle ring. Okay, and we want these all to be on the same side of our rings. So one through the first ring. So that's the one that we've got our twist tie on. And then two in the next large ring. Okay, and then one more on the end ring. Okay, so there you go. I just want to make mention that if the um, car sound is a little bit louder than normal, um, We've got miserable weather here today. It's wet here. It's actually snowing further up in the mountains. Uh, for those that know Australia or live in Australia, uh, snow is um, not something that happens often here. There is just sort of one area of the country where it snows. Uh, we do get some light snowfall up in the top of the mountains, um, which has happened today. 
we've got miserable wet weather. We don't have the pretty fluffy white stuff, um, but we do have the cold and uh, the wet that seems to go with it. So if the cars are a little bit louder, it's because the roads are wet and they're a little bit noisier. So I do apologize if that is annoying to anybody today. All right, so once we've got those extra rings added to our weave, we want to take up an open large ring and we're going to feed that through the first ring that we added, this first small ring we added, and the next one in the weave, okay? And we're going to close that up and we're going to double that ring. So your work should look something like this. And then what we want to do is we want to take those large rings that we just added and we want to fold one on each side of our weave, okay? So that it sits against our weave, encircling that small ring there in the middle, as you can see. And then we want to lock that ring in place. So we're taking up another open small ring and we're going to go through the eye on this side, in there, picking up all three of our large rings, making sure we've got the three of them, and locking that into place. And then we just want to do that with the remaining spot. Okay, the same thing. So that we've placed two locking rings in our weave. Okay, and your work should look like that at this stage. And then we just want to go over here and repeat those same steps with our next two small rings. So again, taking up a large ring, feeding it to the remaining loose small rings that we've got in our work. Okay, close that out and then double it. So your work looks like that. Fold one ring over on each side of our weave, our piece, and then taking up small rings, we want to lock that ring in place by going through the eye there where all of our three large rings overlap. Close that up and do the same in the remaining space there. So that we've got a total of four of our small rings going through our large rings. Okay. And your work should look like this. So that's just a short section of Celtic Vision. That becomes our end and we want to then work down, sorry, we then want to then work down our weave, okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to add two small rings to each of our end large rings, okay? So just two small rings to each of those. Okay, so we've got one on one end and we're going to add another pair down there. Okay, so your work should look like this at the moment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take up an open large ring 
and we're going to feed it through so we've got eight you can see we've got eight rings hanging down here now so one two three four five six seven eight and we're going to feed our new open large ring through rings two to seven okay so we're not picking up the first and we're not picking up the last of those small rings so feed your large ring through there and close it up so your work should look like this and then our next step is to add two small rings hanging off the large ring that we just placed okay so take up two small rings and put them through that large ring that we placed okay so our work should look like this at the moment so what we're going to do next is we're going to take up a large ring another large open ring And we're going to feed it through the loose ring here that's hanging off our first ring and we're going to feed it through the next ring in the weave okay so one loose ring and through that next ring that's already in place there if you can see that so through there and through that ring we're going to close that ring Okay, so our work looks like this and we're just going to flip our work over and we're going to place another large ring through those same two small rings okay so we're adding another large ring through those first two rings and closing it up okay so your work should like this, look like this now what we want to do is take one of these rings that we added to that center large ring and we want to move it in so that it becomes encircled by those two large rings that we just placed okay so once we've got those in place we want to now lock our rings into place so we're going to take up an opened small ring And we'll feed it through this space here where we're picking sorry through this space here where we pick up all three of those large rings okay and that locks it into place we next want to take up another bright aluminium ring and this one we want to feed in between the rings that are already the bright aluminium rings that are already in place we want it to go through that ring that's being encircled and through the ring there the small ring on top okay close that up and then we need to add one more small ring so that we lock everything down okay so we go through three large rings again and we lock everything down. So we're finished with that side. Okay, and we want to do the same sort of thing on the other side here. Okay, so taking up an open ring, an open large ring, and we're going to feed that through the loose ring and through the ring that was next to it in our weave okay so just looking at it again so I've positioned this so that the ring that we're working here is on the left hand side that is easier for me to follow 
So we're picking up the loose ring and we're picking up the ring that's next to it. We're closing that up. Okay. Flipping our work over to the other side and placing another large ring through the same path on the other side of our work. We want to close that up. Okay, so our work should look like this. We want to move that remaining loose ring so that it sits inside and is encircled by the rings that we just added. We want to lock those large rings in place now. So we're going to take up an opened small ring and we're going to feed it through this spot here in the center where we pick up all of the three large rings, okay? So we go there and we lock it all into place by going through that space there where we pick up all three rings. Next, we take up another open large ring. Okay, and this is where we come in between the large rings that we have just recently placed. And we pick up this first small ring here on the edge and the small ring that's being um, encircled by the outer rings. We go through, we pick both of those up. Okay, close our ring. And then we want to place one final locking ring in here. So we take up an open ring and feed it through all three of those large rings. Okay, and then close that ring up. Okay, and your work should look like this. And then we want to to start the next row, we want to put two small rings on each end of our work. Okay. Two small rings on each large ring on either side. So these are the single large rings that you can see here that run down the side. Pop two of our small rings on there. Okay. So our work should look like this image. So we've got our eight rings back again. So remember, next you want to take up a large ring and we want to feed it through rings two to seven. So we don't pick up the first ring and we don't pick up the last small ring. You pick up all the rest in the middle, feed it through all those rings, close it up. Okay, your work should look like that. And then you want to add two small rings to your single center ring. Okay. So there you go, you've got your two small rings there now coming off. The center large ring and then we want to start building the row again okay so to do that we take up a large ring and we're going to put this through the first loose small ring here on the side okay so this is on this row up here above not the two that we've just added to the center so through that one loose ring there and then through the ring that's next to it. So we just go straight through both of those rings, close it up and do the same on the other side of the work. So flip it over and place another large ring through the same path. Okay. 
So your work should look like this. We want to remember to slip that one of the, the first loose rings that's coming off the center large. We want to slip that in so that it gets encircled by the large rings that we just added. And to lock that all into place, we want to lock it here in the center where we've got three rings overlapping. Okay, so take up a small ring and feed it through all those three rings there in the center, making sure we've got all of them picked up. Okay. And then we want to add a single large ring to our work. This one slips in between the two rings that we did previously and it picks up this first small ring here and it picks up the small ring that the outer rings are um, encircling. Okay, so it slips in between the large rings. It doesn't go through any large rings at all, but it slips through the first small ring and the small ring that's being encircled. And then we close that up. Okay, and then we want to put our final locking ring in place. Now that we've got three large rings there, we can place that final locking ring. And we do that by going through all three of our large rings there. And close it up. Okay, so our work looks like this. So we wanna do the same on the other side. I find it easier to just flip your work over so that the other side then sits here on the left. You may not need to do that, but I just find it easier myself if I do. All right, so to construct that again, we're taking up another large ring. We're going to go through the first loose ring that we have in our chain here and through the next colored ring that sits right next to it. Okay, picking up just those two rings, we close our large ring and we flip our work to the other side and we place another large ring in exactly the same position through the same path, okay, of the small rings. So our work looks like this. So you can see it naturally wants to encircle that final loose ring that we've got there. So let it do that. And to lock it all in place, we're going to take up a small ring and we're going to go through this path here in the center because we've got all three large rings because we want to lock three large rings into place. So we go through that spot there right in the center, making sure we pick up all three of the large rings. Okay. And our work should look like this now. So we've got it locked in here. We need to place another large ring in our work over this side. So to do that, you take up another large opened ring and we want to slip this one in between the two large rings that we've placed over on this side, but it doesn't go through the large rings at all. It just slips in between, but it does pick up the first of our colored rings and it picks up that colored ring there in the center and it pops out the other side. So close that up and we then lock it in place. Now that we've got three rings there, we can lock it in place with our final small ring. Okay, and your work should look like that. So you keep repeating those steps until you reach the end of uh, your bracelet. So your next step here would be to add um, the two loose rings on each side, then you would add the center ring through the seven middle, and then you would start constructing the, um, the rows as we did before. Okay, and just to show you how I finish it off, you want to finish your weave by adding just where you would normally have added two loose rings to these large rings. You don't need to, you can only add one. You can add two if you like, but here, you can see I've only added one and I've put my large ring through all of those rings there. And then to that, I've added a small clasp attachment ring 
and then on the other end I've gone and added a small clasp attachment ring through the middle single large ring up there and before closing I've popped on a lobster clasp. But there you go guys, that's how you construct uh, the Celtics strap weave. Alright guys, well that's it, that is the video tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found it useful. If you did find it useful guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, share the video on social media if you like. While you're here, you might want to consider becoming a subscriber if you aren't already. That would be pretty awesome if you could. Check out some of our other content, there's plenty here for you to look at. And last but not least guys, don't forget to give our shop link up there in the corner a little bit of love and attention. That is where we sell all the bits and bobs and you know what's that you're going to need to whip up this weave and the many others we showcase. All right, guys, thanks once again for popping in and spending your day with me. Um, it's really good to see you. Keep safe, keep well, and I will catch up with you again sometime in the very near future. Bye.